Hi everybody, Jonathan here with a new Twin Motion video, and today is a super exciting day. The new version of Twin Motion 2023 has just dropped. I've downloaded it already this afternoon, and this is literally the very first chance I've got to click on it. So if you go up to the launcher and the Epic Games launcher, you'll notice that we've now got the new preview 2 at the top of the list, 2023.1 preview 2. So this is the very first time I'm ever going to launch this. Let's go ahead and click launch. Okay, so here we are. Um, we've immediately got the new loading screen that we saw in the sort of teaser videos of the new interface. In fact, this has been around in the other preview for a while. You can see that you've basically got a few different kind of templates. Um, I do like this new loading screen. Uh, I call it a home screen, really. And I think the idea of this, it will get better over time. Um, there's a few different sort of templates on here at the moment, but it's just a starting point, really. You do have to actually download these before you can use them. So let's just jump in and see what the new interface holds. So we'll click new scene and wow, look at this. We've got this new gorgeous interface. So let's start to have a look at this in detail and kind of break this down for you and basically just sort of take it from here. Now I'm running on the Mac at the moment, as you can see. Um, I will be testing this on my PC when I get the chance when I'm back in the studio. Well, well here we are in the new Twin Motion 2023. So let's have a look at our first little look at the new interface and immediately I can see that everything is a lot cleaner. What I really like is you can actually minimize all those side panels. You've still got access to them when you need to. So let's just pop out that libraries panel there let's pop out the scene. So this is kind of like the default system. But definitely you're going to notice because you've got the dock hidden uh, down at the bottom, you can actually click that to reduce the size of the viewport. But that means that you get a lot more screen space uh, directly where you need it. Now, the other nice thing is you'll notice we've got this new starting scene with a kind of like default. So we've got an origin point here with an object in and you'll see that all of that is editable. So you can turn off that whole starting base, but it just gives you a really nice clue as where the origin of the scene is, and also uh, just kind of orientates you in terms of size, because these are one meter, these squares here. So for example, I just want to kind of play where and before I do anything at all and open an actual scene, just sort of drag in a couple of trees. I just want to get a feel for how uh, fluid this feels on my Mac. Now I'm just running on an M1 Pro at the moment, and at the moment you can see that I can adjust the speed. So I'm just kind of playing around with the speed. And you'll notice that here are the usual controls that you had before with Twin Motion. So nothing's changed at all. So if you're already a Twin Motion user, all of that is going to be completely familiar. And just watch the other videos on my channel if you're new around here. So let's hide that panel. It's a bit distracting. Pop open the statistics panel. And okay, so at the moment I'm running my M1 Pro on an external Apple screen, but you can see I'm getting a really healthy frame rate of 51 frames a second. Now you would expect that on a very simple scene like this, but it's good news and it feels like it's running quite slick. Let's just adjust the lighting. Okay, so that's nice. You can see I can just start lighting in real time. That's one of the things I absolutely love about Twin Motion. I never get bored of this, just playing around with the architectural sort of lighting and seeing how that works. Okay, good. So over here, you can see we've got a properties dialog. So if, it, if an object is selected, you'll notice that you then have these nice properties that you can actually kind of adjust in one so place. Let's go ahead and open a new scene. Now you'll notice there's two new buttons on the top left and the top right. So the first one is where you can actually kind of sign in. And by the way, if you've launched from the Epic Launcher, you won't need to sign in. It's automatically will have signed you in already. If you click onto the home button on this side of the screen, then you're going to basically bring up these new templates, which I haven't downloaded yet, but I will do shortly. I'm definitely looking forward to exploring these. In fact, so what I'm going to do is just go to one of my recent scenes. I've still got the demo scenes here, but I've got a really nice new little scene that I've been playing around with. Um, and it's basically an epic demo scene. So let's open up this one. You can see the very first time it's going to convert the file. So do bear that in mind. When you migrate from different versions of Twin Motion, um, sometimes you will actually just have to convert those files. Now, I will tell you, this is really the very first time I've actually seen this scene. So I'm just going to kind of have a little explore around, as is the way with a new sort of Twin Motion scene. So it kind of looks like a really nice sort of contemporary modern bit of architecture uh, with a nice swimming pool and stuff you can see there's quite a sophisticated landscape. But what's really nice about this so far, I say just running on my Mac, um, I can see that I'm getting a really decent sort of level of performance. 
Anything less than about 15 frames a second, it goes a little bit sluggish and you probably want to reduce the quality as well. Let's do the lighting test. So we're just going to scroll through and adjust that lighting. Yeah, that's looking really, really nice. And there is sort of, you know, things like fire and things in here as well. Okay, so let's actually do a real bit of workflow. Let's pretend that I was actually working on a project. So I'm going to go back to my library, I'm going to open up some characters, for example, and let's try some animated humans. Now, you know, I really like the animated people. And what I love about them is the fact you can kind of drag them in. And then if you click F, we can sort of fit to them. And basically you can click onto all the different poses. Now this is immediately nicer. We've got all these kind of little different options here that we can kind of click through and basically very rapidly adjust. Um, I like the way you can kind of have them walking, shopping and doing various things. But this is definitely a lot nicer. And if I do want to, I can pop out that side panel so that I can still see the scene while I actually do all these other things as well. So definitely nice improvement. Um, the speed of dragging things in seems a lot faster than the previous sort of loading. I do remember on my Mac previously I had a bit of a lag and delay when I kind of dragged these guys in. Um, and basically that all seems pretty zippy. So in order to be able to kind of just pop that panel back, I just click on that side button and there we are. I'm interested to see what happens if I select multiple people. Okay, so I've got multiple people selected. I can still change certain aspects of them. So have them speaking, idling, <laughs> always like to show them dancing, see what kind of dancing they can do as well. There we go. So if you're having a bit of a party, why not? Okay, so that's cool. That's really, really nice. The fact you can actually select multiple people with the command key and actually just certain settings of them all together. Definitely a winner. I'm keen to do a couple of other things. So the next thing I want to look at is the materials. So to do that, I can click T for texture. Let's go and sample a material there. And you notice that now the material preview, rather than a, a very small kind of dialogue in this corner, pops up over here. Okay, so let's go and inspect this material a bit closer and see what we can do. So we've got the grunge factor here that I can kind of put on just to make things look a little bit more kind of realistic and weathered. That's quite nice. We've got the uh, luminosity, so we can kind of change that as well. Now, if we go into the details tab, you're going to see a whole bunch of new settings. Um, but now we've actually got things like the saturation and the gamma. Um, we've got something called lift, interesting, and gain as well. So we've got a lot more control. Now, if you really want to, you can even open up all of those and start to sort of play around with the different sort of uh, criteria of that gamma as well. Um, be kind of nice if there was a reset button in there. So just uh, maybe set it back to one if you need to. But I like the way you can pop out these panels. Um, and what will be interesting is, let's go on to a new material. Let's go on to this glass, for example. Okay, so that's cool. It just responds immediately to uh, the glass texture there, as you would expect it to. And we can just adjust that in real time, just to kind of get a really nice sort of shine on that glass. But if we do want to, we can open up these extra panels and adjust uh, even more things about them. So very, very cool. I uh, really like the way you can kind of actually access all of these different details. So the new materials panel looks pretty good. But if we do actually click the materials up itself uh, from the bottom, you'll notice that all the dock uh, changes and all the materials pop up here. So you can kind of scroll up and down in this new interface here. Kind of nice if you could adjust these previews. Maybe that's something we can have a look at. Um, but basically, you'll see a little tick in the corner which shows that that material is used. And in here, look, you can do things like duplicate, rename, and add to user library as well. But this is a really good way if you do want to delete a material. Um, if the material isn't used, you'll be able to delete it. Um, I think you can only delete materials that obviously aren't used in the scene. Um, but basically I can select all of them. So if I hold shift down and select all of them and click delete, that will actually delete and purge any unused materials. Okay, so let's click T onto our concrete there and let's just go and have a look at what we can do. So we've got the basically all the usual things that you would have. Um, let's go through to things like the mapping and really you can open up as many of these different panels as needed. So very, very nice. Now it's going to take a little while to kind of just get used to the new interface here. Um, how about if you want to adjust the size of the interface? Okay, so I know for a fact, if you go down into uh, your preferences, so to do that, we can actually go to stats if I wanted, 
and click on quality setup or I can go file and just pop down into my preferences command P so if we go to appearance um, you can now see that twin motion has a very nice trick up its sleeve with different interface scales so if I click on that one and click OK wow that looks really cool suddenly I've got like a really nice size viewport even when the materials dock up um, I really like that if you've got like a 4k monitor that's going to really give you a nice sort of zone to work in um, you've still got access to absolutely tons of tools and oh yeah that looks really cool so basically this is a lot more customizable now as you can see um, you've got this ability to basically really adjust like the that. interface, the libraries, the stats panel. I mean, none of the things like the libraries look that different. I know there are some new materials within it, um, but they've been around in the other previews as well. I think the main thing that you're going to really notice that's different is this new properties panel. And as I say, what's nice about this, it responds to the item that you're actually kind of selecting as you're working. Okay, so let's just revisit the dock at the bottom. Um, here is where we can actually import additional files. And you can see here's some information about the uh, files that were actually imported, the data smith files that made up this project. Now, if we go over to uh, the materials, we've just had a look at that already. Populate is another panel I just want to have a quick look at. So let's basically go down and find a little area where we want to uh, a little bit of kind of landscaping, if you like. Kind of just adjust my camera here. And you can see I'm on the foliage drop and paint. Now, if I do want to, I could minimize my scene. And perhaps we'll open up that a bit bigger so the way this works is we can basically take a bunch of plants and drag them into our scene um, so let's select all of those I'm really interested to see how this works let's get up a bit higher so we can see and let's get my kind of brush size up a little bit bigger oh this is nice you've got a new slider here and you can just type in that is definitely something that's quite a big improvement now, here we go. We're just sort of planting some new trees and plants. And it all seems pretty zippy, actually. Um, so let's just get rid of that materials palette. We don't need that. You can see, as ever, Twin Motion is quite rapid to actually kind of place all these things. Now, if I do want to make some adjustments, remember that you can kind of go back into your library. Um, let's go back to maybe some rocks. Let's just drag some of those into my Dropbox. Okay, there we go. And we can change the density of those individual items. So it looks like the functionality is basically the same. It's really just the Dropbox is a bit different now and the um, kind of the way that you kind of add them to that Dropbox as well. Okay, so I've never really seen this project before, but I can see that there are a few kind of a different media already set. And um, that's nice. So we've got a nice little kind of welcoming front view there. Looks like I can kind of go in a bit closer. And then we've got a nice little kind of scene from the back. Uh, let's just adjust that scene to be a slightly nicer view. Let's kind of adjust that a little bit there. That looks cool. And all I need to do if I want to is just click on the refresh button there. Now let's go back to the front scene. So with the scene selected, you're going to basically see now I've got all of these tabs available to edit. So I can do things like change the weather quite rapidly. I can change things like the season as well. Um, now none of this is new, you've seen this before in Twin Motion, but it never fails to kind of please me, the ability to uh, show the client what it might be look at sort of winter time, and then sort of just slightly kind of springy post snow with a little bit of rain on the floor as well. If I want to, I can also adjust things like the location just to adjust that lovely lighting as well, make that a bit more atmospheric. So all of this is definitely not only uh, quite responsive, it really kind of looks like it's kind of improved in terms of speed and ability. Okay, so that's all really good. The saved images and the way you adjust those images looks great. And I'm sure that if you click on the video, it will be the same kind of thing. Basically, let's just click plus to set the keyframe. Move forward a bit. Let's animate a little bit here. Yep, nice and straightforward. And let's click on our preview. Let's just click rewind and let's play. Okay, so you can see, not bad. The frame rate I'm getting is pretty good for a real-time rendering. And one thing I've noticed that is nice, you can now select both uh, frames, if you like, by clicking settings to select both. And I've noticed that you can adjust the weather and things like that for all of those at the same time. So let's kind of go and adjust the time of day, go for a bit of a night shot. And let's kind of get around to a bit more of a 
sort of sunset view. That looks pretty cool. And um, okay, well, now I'm interested to see what impact some lighting might have. Good fun. I'm just playing around, honestly. Let's just drag in a nice light, see how that works, and kind of get that up into the scene. And maybe hold shift down and just copy another one somewhere over here. Yep, it's looking good. Okay, so it doesn't seem to have affected the performance too much at all, which is actually really quite impressive, bearing in mind I'm just running on my laptop here. Um, so let's go back to our scene. So I'm just going to quit media mode to go back out into the project itself. But it's very rapid. If I just want to click back into my video, I basically click the media dock and there is my video straight away. So let's have a little look at how this might work if I was to do a bit of a time lapse. I'm going to click onto that and adjust that time of day. I'm just going to go for something a bit earlier in the morning. And let's click on that one and go for something a bit later in the afternoon. Just sort of getting a bit darker and just see how that looks. So when I click play, you can see not only will it kind of scroll through the uh, motion, it will actually scroll through those times of day. And although the preview is slowing down a little bit, it still looks pretty good. Good, so I'm pretty happy with the video test and I will definitely be exploring these other buttons later. Okay, so I think, listen, the final thing I want to do for this particular project is just click export. I'm just keen to see how this works. So I'm going to go to image and let's just click plus. Okay, that's cool. So we're just basically loading in. Let's just load in a couple of images. That's fine. I actually re-rendered them at 4K and basically what I realized they were only uh, HD to begin with. So if you do want to, you can select multiple images here. That's quite nice. And you can actually go to image and just change them all to 4K as you can see. Now do remember you can render up to 16K resolution and you can also do some lots of custom uh, resolutions as well. Now they only took 17 seconds to render, which isn't bad on my little laptop for a 4K image. So we're going to have a quick look at how long it takes to render our video. Um, so we've got a couple of keyframes here. It's only a very short video with 10 seconds. We've got a nice little time lapse. It's nothing too flashy, but just fine for this little kind of initial test. So what's really nice is uh, we can basically click onto our settings. That selects all the clips there. Go onto the video and here we can see the output. Um, so you can see I'm rendering at 4K. Okay, so without doing anything else, let's just go ahead and um, select our video. So we need to click export and we need to click plus on the video there and just select our video and ready to go. So now let's click export. We're not doing any images at the same time. If we did want to, we could actually click plus and load in the images as well. That's fine. I'm happy. So I'm going to go for it and just export this video and just see how long that actually takes. So thanks ever so much for watching everybody. I look forward to seeing you. Let's just review these final images and video footage as we kind of head out of this section of the video. Thanks for watching everybody. Bye bye.